Coming up on Harvest, he was a frightened, irresponsible father when a devastating diagnosis transformed his life. Author Scott Lorette shares his family's life-changing story. And in today's Prosperity Matters, Pete and Harold Hazen discuss, discuss the what, when, and how of retirement planning. And Brian Bush stands by in Jerusalem with a report on the latest news, dominating headlines in the Middle East. Stay with us. Harvest starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Harvest Show. It is June 1st. Pete mm -hmm. Summerall, mm -hmm. it's not the first day of summer. Mm -hmm. I wish it were, you know, and the temperatures reminded me of that this morning. But um, it's a big day, a start um, mm -hmm. of summer here, our summer global harvest campaign here at Lissy Broadcasting. So first of all, how are you today? Doing well, thank you, and good weekend. Yourself? I had a great weekend. You know, uh -huh. I had uh, an assignment in um, Indianapolis, Indiana, so mm -hmm. I took that time. I want you to know as my mm -hmm. boss that I did do, I completed my <laughs> assignment, and then I did a little uh -huh. shopping, came uh -huh. back. Yeah, terrific. You know, yeah, it was really terrific. great. No. So I know that, uh, let's get an update first on um, your trip to the Holy Land. That's right. Headed Leave out. this afternoon, actually, uh, going to Cyprus and then to Israel and looking forward to it and got a great tr tour going co coming up and mm -hmm. it's going to be good. Okay, I want you to know that I have five friends who will be taking this tour thanks to, well, I'll just say... <laughs> I won't say things. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, yeah. so they're no, looking forward great. to it. Pastor uh -huh. Willie Robinson and members from uh -huh. uh, Glorious Temple Church of God in Christ. I just thought I'd throw okay. that out there. So right. they will great. be joining you on the tour as They'll well. They'll have a great time. Okay, yeah. so now the Summer Global Harvest Campaign. Right. We'll hear a lot about it all this month. What is it? You know, it's uh, during the summer. A lot of people go on vacation mm -hmm. and have a lot of challenges uh, financially. And so during the summer, we're asking people to step up and be a part of helping us meet our budget. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes I think that people just, you know, as they go on their vacations and they may watch us or hear us mm -hmm. while they're out, that it somehow just continues to go on, but it takes money to run the program. You know, it does. Uh, our expenses don't go down during the summer. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, we do need people to help us during the summer to be able to pay our bills. That's right. So if you'd like to be a part of the Global Summer Harvest Campaign, we'll tell you about it all throughout the month of June or really throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. Hey, I was just uh, reading some headlines about, you know, the candidates who are running for president on the Republican mm -hmm. side. And there is a five way tie. And uh, Ben Carson, who says he's not a politician, is in the top five. Are you surprised? Yeah, I think it starts off with our uh, former go governor of Florida, mm -hmm. Jeb Bush, and Marco Rubio is in the top five. I don't think I'm saying it in the exact order, but we know that they mm -hmm. are tied for it. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott Walker, Wisconsin, what say you? Are you surprised that the... A lot of great people who are mm -hmm. running, actually, and have announced they're uh, their running. And I look forward, actually, to a governor to be, uh, you know, in the lead. And I'm not sure who that's going to be, but uh, I think we need to have someone who's actually had uh, some executive, uh, yes. you know, experience in the background. Uh, to to uh, to lead the Republicans. So, uh, and on the Democrat side, actually, there's a few more people jumping into the to that uh, uh, area as well. And so, hopefully, that uh, plays out as well. Yeah, the governor of Maryland, O'Malley, mm -hmm. he jumped yep. in the race, and uh, you know, and a lot of people are saying, you know, more people need to get in the race because mm -hmm. right now it's. Um, it's a shoe in for Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. We do not know that right. to be the case <clears throat> because we don't know what's going to pop up, you know, closer mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, the time when we strike out and start really getting serious about campaigning. Um, I think it was Hillary Clinton who recently stopped by a bakery mm -hmm. in South Carolina. She started quoting, she saw a man there reading his Bible and she says, what are you reading? He says, 1 Corinthians 13. Mm -hmm. Immediately she says, oh, I know that scripture. Love is patient, mm -hmm. love is kind. And she started quoting the scripture. My point to you is, my question to you is, you know, how important do you think religion will be in this upcoming race? Very. Very important. Uh, mm -hmm. I do believe that there should be a person of faith uh, that uh, is leading the country, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where all it 
plays out. Mm -hmm. And not to just use the race, excuse me, the the religion mm -hmm. card, not right. the race card, the religion card to, um, you know, to get voters to vote, right. but to be authentic and to be genuine about it. You know, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we, we've had a challenge, I think, with the current president that mm -hmm. uh, very rarely attends a church service, and uh, uh, but at the same time seems to be a person of faith. So, uh, you know, I really look forward to a, a, a candidate uh, being a person of faith going forward. And you know, Pete, the reason why I think it's so important is because it depends on, I mean, it will help you as you make these mm -hmm. decisions, these, you know, life or death decisions for millions mm -hmm. of Americans. And so uh, I think it speaks to your character and your integrity, mm -hmm. um, where you mm -hmm. fall, where faith is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not just, um, I mean, it just is very important to to the nation and to the future of our Absolutely. nation. Absolutely. No, I totally agree. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. You keep your eyes on that and be sure to register to vote because, you know, if we want to have a say, mm -hmm. then we should be registered voters mm -hmm. uh, to help get that word out. And you can, you can also not only vote, but we can pray because we know that the king's hand, the Bible says that the king's hand, I mean, heart is in the hand of God mm -hmm. and God can twist it any way he wants to. But he does that through prayer. So you can join the conversation if you need prayer. You know the prayer line number is 1-800-365-3732. And be sure to join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter um, where the discussion continues long after the show is over. And you can send your email directly to the set of harvest at liveatlacy.com. Don't go anywhere. The international news is next. Today is Monday, June 1st, 2015. I'm Bob Nagel, in for Chuck Freebie with this check on international news. A video released by the Iraqi Defense Ministry allegedly showing Iraqi jet fighters carrying out airstrikes on Islamic State group hideouts, vehicles, and personnel in Iraq. The footage released on Sunday is said to be filmed from an aircraft over the Anbar province where Iraqi air forces support a government offensive to retake the region from extremist militants. The Ministry of Defense said in a statement attached to the video that the Islamic State group had suffered heavy losses in men and equipment following the attack. Last month, the Iraqi government announced the start of a wide-scale operation to recapture areas under the control of the IS group in the western Ambar province after suffering a humiliating defeat in the regional capital city of Ramadi. Such attacks are expected to continue. A Saudi-led coalition airstrike hit a weapons depot in the Yemeni capital of Sana'a on Monday. The storage facility is set into the Noqam Mountains overlooking the city, and the ensuing fire can be seen and heard for miles around. Missiles were seen being launched from the heat of the fire and crashing into the side of the mountain. It was not immediately clear who owns the storage facility, the Houthis and loyalists control Sana'a and much of the northern region. The Saudi-led coalition has repeatedly struck the site where missiles, tanks, and artillery are kept since launching the air campaign against the rebels known as Houthis on March 26th. The Chinese capital imposed on Monday the country's toughest ban on indoor smoking in the hopes of stemming a looming health crisis. Smoking in Beijing is now prohibited in all indoor public places, including offices, shopping malls, and airports. Beijing's main terminal will close its three smoking rooms, and special smoking areas will be set up at the city's 600 bus stops. Fines for violators have been raised up to 200 yen, up from 10 yen, charged under the former partial ban. The World Health Organization says 300 million Chinese people smoke, including half of all the men, and that nearly 740 million people are exposed to secondhand smoke. The group says lung cancer kills more than 1.3 million people in the country each year. That is one-third of the global total. A shocking increase in cigarette sales over the past year prompted the action. Taxes are low on cigarettes, and bans for youth smoking are generally pretty lax.
The South Korean president on Monday criticized her government for not taking early measures on the spread of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome of uh, MERS in South Korea and called for all possible efforts to block its further spread. Her reaction came as the South Korean Health Ministry confirmed three cases of MERS, increasing the number of infected cases to 18. The ministry said there were more than 680 people currently in quarantine at homes and uh, hospitals for possible infection. However, it is reported that there have been no ter tertiary infections reported. There have been more than 1,100 cases reported so far, with 465 of those people having died from the disease, mostly from Saudi Arabia. That's according to European Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The United States National Security Agency the NSA is losing its authority to collect Americans' phone records in bulk after Republican Senator Rand Paul stood in the way of extending the fiercely contested program in an extraordinary Senate session on Sunday. But that program and several others implemented after 9-11 are expected to be revived in a matter of days. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell reluctantly embraced a House bill that would extend the provisions that expired Sunday while also reworking the bulk phone collections program. The lapse in the programs may be brief, but intelligence officials warn that it could jeopardize America's safety and amount to a win for extremists. Civil libertarians applauded as Paul forced the expiration of the once secret program made public by former NSA operative Edward Snowden. The Senate adjourned until Monday when the measure will be taken up again beginning at around noon. And that's a check on international news. I'm Bob Nagel. Coming up later, Brian Bush gives us an update from the Middle East. But up next, Scott Lorette shares his son Austin's incredible story through his project, Unbreakable Boy. Stay tuned. Harvest continues after this. Pete Summerall has always shared his father's lifelong vision to save the lost. So over the summer months of June and July, LaCie Broadcasting is praying fervently that God will bring in a bountiful global summer harvest. To sustain vital ministries that are now reaching countless millions of people, LaCie must receive $331,000 in the next 60 days. Please send your June gift today. Call LaCie Broadcasting at 1-800-365-3732. That's 1-800-365-3732. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. ISIS terrorists have slaughtered thousands of Christians and moderate Muslims across the Middle East. Over a million people have fled their homes. Many, after being given the ultimatum, convert to Islam or die. They've lost everything because they refused to renounce Christ. With every hour that passes, the situation grows worse for tens of thousands of people who were driven from their homes by ISIS. Feed the Hungry has committed to support these refugees by providing a box of food that would last an entire month. Today, with your gift of $70, you can help five families know that they are not forgotten. We need you to act now. Please call 1-877-769-9268 or visit feedthehungry.org.
When Scott and Teresa Lorette got married, they were unprepared for the devastating diagnosis that would transform their lives as new parents to their son, Austin. Scott went from a frightened, irresponsible father to a man of faith. That was somewhat 20 years ago, and he joins us with the backstory. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Good morning. Scott. Wonderful to be here. Wow. I mean, when we talk about The Unbreakable Boy, your new project, it's really not the project I expected to read. It wasn't the story I was expecting, but, you know, take me back to your life back then. What was going on in your life that uh, gave birth to this book some 20 years later? I was a single, carefree guy living mm -hmm. in Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, I, I, getting married, having children was the last thing on my mind. And in terms of why I wrote it, I mean, there is a lot that transpired between, uh, you know, being that 30-year-old guy and writing it, but uh, I, I simply, I met a girl, mm -hmm. and things happened very quickly, and we had a baby, and then we got married, and then it all started. Okay, so how long ago, how long have you been married? 21 years this no December. Okay, me. and this journey has taken you 21 years to come to this where it's been a 21-year journey for you Absolutely. that has yeah. unfolded. So you're married, you refer to yourself as an irresponsible person. Kind of really take us down that, down that lane, down that street you were living on. I mean, drug addiction, everything. I, Tell I, us about it. I didn't want to be married. I didn't want to be a father. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, 21 years ago, love this woman because we didn't know each other. And there were things that I did to accommodate myself and for purely selfish reasons. And for me, it was alcohol. And I, I think today, after 21 years, we're finally starting to find that door that's marked love. It's taken us a long, long time. But for me, it was definitely that. I put myself uh, above and ahead of priorities that should have been there, mm -hmm. including family and faith. Speaking of your family, we just saw a, an image or a photograph of a handsome, a little cutie patootie. Um, that would have been, who is this guy right here? That is Austin. Now that's who I want you to tell me about. Tell me, how did Austin change your life? When did he uh, come on the scene? That, that particular photo was, I guess he was less than an hour old. Mm -hmm. And I, I, was, uh, I was a chocolate mess. I was, it was one of those moments that I'll never, ever, ever forget. My firstborn son being born. Little did we know that he, he actually had uh, one or two cracked ribs at the time. Oh my God. I mean, and he, so he was in pain quite a bit. Right, and for probably six months, we, we thought we had this colicky, Mm -hmm. fussy baby. We didn't know. He, he was our, he was our uh, only example to compare against. And we just thought we had the fussiest baby in the whole wide world. Unbeknownst to us, he had a broken rib. Why did he have broken ribs? Well, it was a 50-50 chance that Austin would have osteogenesis imperfecta, or OI for short. And it's a genetic brittle bone disease, the same one that my wife Teresa has and several of her siblings. And uh, we just didn't know that he was born with some broken bones. Mm -hmm. And then you, so you told me uh, before the show started that that went on for about six months. And then you found out something else. Well, at six months, uh, we, well, we confirmed the bones. But mm -hmm. the next thing we really found, though, it was a few years later, was his heart. Mm -hmm. were, uh, were the couple of holes in his heart and there was transpositioning of veins and, and things like that. But the, the autism though, that didn't come till much later. But what you're alluding to is that we slowly started to get diagnosis for different things. It was an alphabet soup from ADD, ADHD. This went on for many years actually. And how did that change you? Because here you go from this carefree father, I mean carefree person, single person, excuse me, to being a father, and now you find out you, your son has, you know, multiple diseases and illnesses. How did that transform your life? Well, I think that Teresa and I, she absolutely had Austin and then Logan as well at the forefront of her priorities. And my mm -hmm. kids, the kids are what kept us together. And who are we looking at here? <laughs> That's Austin with his self-induced, oh. I don't know, he may have had a broken nose, but he threw a toy up in the air and it came down. And mm -hmm. that was not uncommon to see that. What are some of the challenges you two faced um, in, in this, with this diagnosis? Not only the health conditions, but the autism, everything that's going on. Well, I, I kid and say that the, the 
the heart issues and the bone issues really aren't that big of a deal. And in the grand scheme of things, they're not. Mm -hmm. And when he was 10 or 11, that's when all these different acronyms turned into autism. And what we know it is today, it's more, for him specifically, it's Asperger's, which is a, it's, it's autism. And that is the one that is a challenge every single day, today more so than ever. So what's it like? Give us an everyday, I mean, what happens on a typical day? Or is it, is it that you never know what to expect? Well, there are some things that are pretty much the norm. He, he, there's, no, there's no gray area with Austin. It's mm -hmm. black or white. He's either really 1,000 miles an hour or he's had a seizure and he's out. Mm -hmm. And it's just nonstop. But you have your new project, it's called The Unbreakable Boy, and I think I know why you called it that, but let us know, tell our viewers um, the backstory of it, a father's fear, a son's courage, and a story of unconditional love. W unconditional love, I mean, this may sound like a difficult question to answer, but is, did you find it difficult to love someone with autism? Oh, no, mm -hmm. absolutely not. And I believe that the, the kids, you know, that is what, that was the glue okay. that kept us together, regardless of how Teresa and my relationship was, was evolving and becoming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for people who are watching and they have children or grandchildren who have uh, special needs, you know, sometimes we think that that's going to, oh, just the world has, the bottom has dropped out. But you're saying not so. Well, no, that's a fair question because I don't know what the numbers are, but special needs slash autism especially, mm -hmm. the, the divorce rate apparently is very high. Mm -hmm. It's very high anyway, Right. divorce in America. But when you throw in special needs and autism, it's really high. And so the fact that we're together almost 21 years later, is, is absolutely uh, unique and um, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Well, I'd imagine that God had to perform a great work in your life and, and in your family to bring it all together because you don't go from, you know, being this selfish person to giving unconditional love overnight. There had to be a transformation in your life as well. Yes, mm -hmm. a absolutely. And, and of course, for me, it was, it was a specific night at almost about nine years ago. Mm -hmm. when uh, I had, I call it my seminal moment, and I think everybody has those. Well, we're going to let you tell us about that moment when we come back um, to talk with uh, Scott Lorette about un Unbreakable Boy, A Father's Fear, A Son's Courage, and A Story of Unconditional Love. Coming up later, bring, uh, Brian Bush will bring us an update on peace talks in, in Israel, but uh, we will return with Scott Lorette in just a moment. To have what scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure. And that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's lesea.com. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lacey Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit lacy.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. We are back with Scott Lorette. He's the author of The Unbreakable Boy. And just before break, you were telling us about this moment that you had in your life that kind of brought things together for you. Tell us about it. Well, I call it my seminal moment. And, and I think that that's, 
something that everybody has it at one point in their life, maybe, maybe more than one time. But for me, it was, it was the last time I, I drank alcohol. And it was also a moment where myself and Austin and Logan and I, I, I put their life in, 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 in definite danger, in harm's way. And I, I don't understand how we're, we lived through it. I drove, and uh, I don't remember very much about it. And it's one of those times, too, where it, I, it's so difficult to relive. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like going there, but at the same time, I can never forget that. Mm -hmm. And it also is that moment where everything about it, who was me, that makes up who I am, was changed forever because of it. And how did your faith play into all of this? Because, um, you know, that's how people get through situations and hardships. Well, for me, it took many years to get to where I was. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that next morning, it, something did click. And I, I compare it to, like, the fog over my eyes. It just slowly started to dissipate. But I think that the, my sobriety and my faith are inexorably linked. Mm -hmm. The stronger my faith is, the stronger my sobriety and vice versa. And uh, I think that if, if one were to fail, the other would surely follow. Wow, that, that's so, um, that's courageous of you to, to say that because a lot of people don't want to admit that. We just, you know, come across as happy mm -hmm. all the time not willing to admit that we can fall back into situations if our faith does not keep us intact. Oh, right, and, and I wrote this book, and I think some people may look at it and say, oh, gosh, they've got it all going. We're still as broken as ever mm -hmm. and, and messed up as much as you are. Mm -hmm. Aren't <laughs> we all a work right. in progress? Yes. You describe Austin as being a courageous person. How so? I mean, Austin is, what, 20 now? He's 20 years old. Well, I think that because Austin doesn't beat to other people's drum. He doesn't care about what is the... He likes nice things, of course, but, but in terms of what he wears and what he does... Where is he right here? What's going on here? That was prom about two years ago, and he's getting ready to get into a 1965 Candy Apple Red convertible <laughs> Impala. Talk about his accomplishments. I mean, he's gone to school. Talk about some of those things. Well, he's currently in enrolled in culinary school, and uh, it, the one thing we didn't anticipate was how he would do academically. He's doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. And it was just something that really, really threw us off. And what about Logan, your other son? How has this all affected his life? Well, Logan, everybody wants to know about Logan. And, and Logan, he could have gone this way or that way. And what he's turned into, though, is this incredibly strong young man of faith, someone that I, I look up to and want to emulate. He's one of my heroes. I, he's either going to be a doctor or a missionary. <laughs> and but anything he touches from music to sports uh, he's all academic all state all everything and he's just a solid human being when you open this book you think it's a book about special needs but it really isn't what would you want what is the takeaway for you what do you want readers to know you and I had talked about this but I think that we're all still broken and, mm -hmm. and messed up and uh, one of the reviews I recently got was laugh cry think and, and I just really, and it's happening too. People are reading the book and they're thinking because, and they're seeing that, you know, I'm broken just like they are. And one of the neat analogies I, I really like is that, and, and I'm just starting to do it, and so is my wife, is that all you need to do though is look down because mm -hmm. all the pieces are right there. And I think for 20 years, that's what I've been trying to do. And now more so than ever is just, all we got to do is pick those pieces up. What about your wife, Teresa? How, um, I mean, just being there, every day, you know, going through this situation, um, raising a child with autism, how has it changed her? Well, she's stronger than I will ever be. Mm -hmm. And it's, for us, it's really, uh, it's, it's quite a moment because I think that our relationship and our love is only now beginning to show. And because the priorities were just, mine were obviously so mixed up, but hers were her children and her faith. You've demonstrated through your story that people with autism can live a life, a successful mm -hmm. life, and I think that's an education for many people. Um, how important was it for you to share that information? Because it puts things in perspective. You can have hopes and dreams for your children because they have, even though they may have different, uh, you know, needs or may have special needs. Absolutely, and I, I know that Austin one day will be working in a restaurant. 
he wants a girlfriend, he wants to drive, mm -hmm. he wants to live on his own. And those are things that we're all, we're all going to work towards. And I, I think that what's key for anybody that's living in a family with special needs is to embrace what they love. And okay. for him, it's cook. One of the things he loves is cooking. And we've embraced that and encouraged him and pushed them. And we've included him in everything. I think inclusion is such an enormous factor to not shelter that child. And it shows because he's an autistic person who's extremely social and verbal. At the same time, it's really hard living with Austin. Uh, he's got the most love of any kid I've ever met in my life. The, on the other hand, it's just so sometimes brutally difficult to live with Austin. Mm -hmm. But it's been worth it. Oh, no, no doubt about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. You know, um, as you talk about that, I mean, there are parents, I think, and grandparents, people who are watching, you know, as they get this education about autism and children with special needs, I hear you saying basically, you know, treat your autistic child the way you would treat your other children, you know, to pursue all the things that they have in them to help develop yes. those, their potential. Yes, and I, I really like this because what, what happens we try to fix people, mm -hmm. just uh, in general. We all try to fix people that we think are maybe not normal or wrong. And maybe it's that we need to better understand how they learn and how they receive and process and transmit things. And that's one of the things that has really helped me with Austin, is trying to learn how he, he learns versus trying to fix him. Mm -hmm. And was he able, has he been able to communicate that very well to you, like, this is who I am? No. Yes okay. and no. That's part of the it's, process, though. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, it's just, it'll, it'll never end. It's an ongoing thing that we'll always have to deal with with Austin. Okay, so I don't know if our viewers can really see this, uh, this picture of him with this hat on. You said that he wears this hat almost everywhere, or he's wearing a hat Correct. everywhere he goes. Why is that? Well, hats have always been something for Austin. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Right. That's one of my favorite all-time pictures. If you can see the expression on my face, it's, it's one of, I've got a smile, but also there's anguish in my eyes because that's, that's what Austin in my life is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's love and anguish at the same time. But the hats, see, there are hats everywhere. They bring something to him. They comfort him. They ground him. And he's always got some type of hat on. And what have you learned about God in all of this? What have you learned about him? throughout this process? Well, I look at this 20 plus year process and, and realize that I may have left him when I left high school. I may mm -hmm. have left God behind, but he was always there. Mm -hmm. And especially with that seminal moment of mine that one night, uh, I, it, that had to have been part of it because I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. What's next for Austin? Well, Austin's gonna continue with school. And, and I think that uh, working towards his goals, being in a restaurant, and uh, he's going to accomplish those, obviously. Well, thank you so much, Scott, for sharing your story with us. Um, the Unbreakable Boy, A Father's Fear, A Son's Courage, A Story of Unconditional Love. To connect with Scott, go to theunbreakableboy.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his project, The Unbreakable Boy, A Father's Fear, A Son's Courage, and A Story of Unconditional Love. And still to come, Pete and Harold Hazen discuss early retirement. You don't want to miss it here on Harvest. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you have some treasures like silver and gold coins or old jewelry that you don't wear anymore? Why not invest them into changing lives for Jesus? Ask yourself if these treasures are really worth keeping, or should you invest them into making an eternal difference in someone's life? Call 1-800-365-3732 for a prepaid insured shipping envelope. Lay up your treasure in heaven. It'll be waiting for you when you get there. Well, Sea Tours comes to Israel three times a year, February, June and November. And we want you to join us as we experience the land of the Bible and walk through the Bible where the Bible literally does come to life.
We want to share with you more information at LaCitours.com about how you can come to the land of the Bible and experience the Bible for yourself. For a free November tour brochure, call 1-800-685-3732 or visit LaCitours.com. Dr. Lester Summerall said that faith comes not by prayer, but by continually feeding on God's Word. Paul the Apostle wrote that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Lacey Broadcasting's Partner in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries, whether by television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, a 24-hour daily prayer line, souls hear the gospel, Will you join our fellowship of partners in faith? With every soul you reach for Jesus Christ, you're laying up treasure in heaven. We need your help to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. You can be a partner in faith for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. Call today, 1-800-365-3732. Welcome back, and, and uh, I'm joined by Dr. Harold Hazen, our Director of Development here at LC Broadcasting. And Harold, a lot of things people should be doing about uh, their planning uh, on their finances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to talk about getting your house in order. You know, the, the Bible tells us that we should get our house in order. That means get your estate planning in order, get your wills in order. And I just talk to dozens of people all the time. They say, yeah, I ought to do that. I need to do that. I need to update my will. And, and that's another thing we like to tell people is even if you have a will and it hasn't been looked at in three, four, five years, there could be a lot of changes in your family situation, could be changes in where you live, could be all kinds of things that impact your your will and we never know when the day is going to come when we're going to need that will and have everything in place and so one of the things that I've been hearing a lot about is something called beneficiary designations okay and in simple language what that means is we can pass assets um, uh, POD payable mm -hmm. on death or TOD transfer on death in other words just by having a name of someone or an organization and if you want to give some assets for example when you uh, when we uh, pass away we want to be able to send bequests to our favorite charities mm -hmm. to our churches perhaps and you can do that with these kinds of designations which are very easy to do and something that we are to be especially when it comes to passing our retirement assets mm -hmm. you know there's something like 23 mm -hmm. trillion dollars tied up in wow. our yeah I mean that's what's estimated is out there in IRAs and other kinds of retirement situations and people are dying and and one of the ways to have that is to be able to do that with a beneficiary designation I made a little chart on some of the reasons explaining why would you do it this way okay. one of the reasons that you would do it this way is because it's a very simple easy way to do it and it passes outside of probate court outside of your will, outside of anything that's legally involved because the name is on there, so it just automatically mm -hmm. transfers. You don't need a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's always a good thing if you don't right. need a lawyer. Yeah. I mean, we, we like lawyers and we want lawyers when we need them, mm -hmm. but usually when you need a lawyer, right. it's not a happy situation. Right. So this, uh, this will pass easily. Another reason that it, it um, allows you to use your assets. Mm -hmm. It doesn't uh, impede your assets in any way. It doesn't tie them up so you can use them during your lifetime. It can also allows you to revoke it and change your mm -hmm. mind. You know, suppose mm -hmm. you decided mm -hmm. I'm going to pass these assets to a person or to somebody in the family or to an organization mm -hmm. or to mm -hmm. a charity or to mm -hmm. your church and you change your mind mm -hmm. about that and you right. want to do something different. Well, you can do that. It's easily revoked at the okay. same time. And then finally, there are some uh, possible tax advantages and we're always looking for ways to save taxes we don't want to duck the taxes that we owe and what we should pay but if we can avoid unnecessary taxes that's good stewardship right. and God right. likes that yeah you know, how does a charitable gift annuity play into any of this? Well, see, the charitable gift annuity is another wise way to handle your assets mm -hmm. and, and to uh, set up your life. For example, it's part gift and part investment. That's the wonderful thing about a charitable gift annuity. It allows you, perhaps, to make the largest gift that you would ever make in your lifetime mm -hmm. through a charitable gift annuity. At the same time, you provide income to yourself for the rest of your life mm -hmm. at a fixed rate of income and mm -hmm. the rates on charitable gift annuities right now are really very favorable, very mm -hmm. high if you compare them to what we're getting 
on a savings account or a certificate of deposit, which is uh, pretty low. I check these every once in a while, and, and you know, we're averaging a percent maybe right. uh, yeah. in a good situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, charitable gift annuities, especially for people who are older, you have to be at least 49 and a half, but... If you're retired, say 65, 70, the rates start to get up around 6, 7 percent, and uh, it, there's a lot of advantages to a charitable mm -hmm. gift annuity. So how does that uh, process start? Well, it's very easily done. That's mm -hmm. what's nice about a charitable gift annuity. It's a contract. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you need to get accountants and lawyers into. Mm -hmm. We just ask people to give us a call. And uh, what we're going to do is take some contact information. Mm -hmm. We're not going to say, okay, we've got your name and address and send you a whole wad of information, 90% right. of which doesn't apply. Right. So we're going to get some specifics from you. We want to know your age, your date of birth, some things like that. And then we're going to put together a very personalized illustration that perfectly fits their circumstances. So they can look at it and, and see exactly how this would work. They'll know what their tax benefits are. They'll know what their income is going to be, when it's going to come in. They'll know everything they need to know. Very professionally done. And the best part's free of charge. Yeah. We do this every day. Okay. Now, how does that play into a, a will? Well, if you have a charitable gift annuity, that's outside of your estate planning. So mm -hmm. it doesn't even come into, into your will at all. It, it doesn't impact your assets mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's something that will come to you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But when you die, it ends. Mm -hmm. And the gift part, it's two possible ways that the gift card can be handled. The gift part can be handled. One way is it can be there until they pass away, mm -hmm. and then that gift goes into the ministry. Mm -hmm. Uh, wherever you just designate that you want it to go. If you go to Let's See Broadcasting, that's when mm -hmm. we would get it. Mm -hmm. Those are nice because that's like an endowment for us. We know that it's coming in the pipeline someday. Mm -hmm. But then there are other ways that we do this in which we get the gift up front. There are people who say, you know, I really want my money to impact the ministry now. I want to impact lives and invest in lives today. And we can take the income right up front. Mm -hmm. The way these are set up is... a. Uh, um, if all things are equal, based on actuarial tables, if we mm -hmm. live to the life expectancies that we're supposed to exactly, mm -hmm. it's about 50-50, 50% back to you in investment and 50% to the ministry. Okay. So, you know, in, in doing a will, you know, do people really need to have a lawyer involved? Well, you, uh, they say no. I know that you can uh, go online and, and get the, the documents, and I, but I never tell people to do a will without a lawyer. Okay. I really believe you should have a lawyer involved because they know the rules. Every state is different. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of little nuances, and especially if your will is a little bit complicated. Suppose you had a, two marriages in the family. Uh, Maybe there are children from a former marriage. There are all kinds of complications that can come into a person's life. Lawyers know how to handle it. So it's not expensive, mm -hmm. and it's easily done. So I, I don't advise people to pull down documents and do their own. It's not a do-it-yourself do project, right. I don't think. Okay. Uh, so back to a charitable gift annuity. It's very simple, right? To yes, be able it is. To get involved in mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the application is very simple. We can help you fill it out over the mm -hmm. phone. Mm -hmm. uh, we mail you. You can mail in the check, whatever, however that's uh, you want to do that. We make it very, uh, very easy. Donna Belding is our mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. officer who who does this all day. She mm -hmm. talks to people about this all day. So mm -hmm. I invite people to call the number on your screen. Mm -hmm. You'll enjoy talking to Donna. She's very well informed on these and she can answer all your questions, and it's no obligation. That's the wonderful thing. We just want people to be aware right. of a tremendous opportunity to invest in themselves as well as invest in God's work. really has been a great uh, blessing for us to yes. be able to have charitable gift annuity yes, available. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's it's been great for us because we've been doing this for several years now, so we have a lot right. of experience in this. By the way, we don't administer them here. We use a, a Christian foundation that does mm -hmm. billions of dollars mm -hmm. in these things, and so they know exactly how to handle this so they we we give it to them to do they take care of all of this for us they understand how it's done and the money is invested in a very safe place and it's about as secure an investment as I know that you can have in today's volatile market mm -hmm. in the way things are up and down and we don't know what's going to happen next uh, on Wall Street mm -hmm. and what's what uh, the you know the White House is sure. going to do or what Congress is going right. to do but we do know that uh, charitable gift annuities are, are a very safe investment uh, terrific Thank you, Harold. Uh, so call 1-866-224-2087 or you can email us at giftplanning at .com, or go to the website legacy.lacy.com. We'll be right back after this.
Would you like to have a secure source of income for the rest of your life? What if that income was set and would never change no matter what the economy does? And at the same time, what if you knew you were changing lives for Jesus? That's right, it's a charitable gift annuity, the amazing part investment, part gift that never stops giving. The rates are much higher than savings accounts or certificates of deposit. It's the perfect way to honor God with your finances and fulfill the Great Commission. If you are over 49 and a half years old and you have at least $10,000, you may qualify. Call us at 1-866-224-2087 or go online to giftplanningatlasc.com. This hard to believe opportunity may not always be available, so call now while the rates of return are still high. Do it today, won't you? Pete Summerall has always shared his father's lifelong vision to save the lost. So over the summer months of June and July, LaCie Broadcasting is praying fervently that God will bring in a bountiful global summer harvest. To sustain vital ministries that are now reaching countless millions of people, LaCie must receive $331,000 in the next 60 days. Please send your June gift today. To send your June gift today, visit LaCie Broadcasting online at LaCie.com. L-E-S-E-A dot com. The eyes of the world focus on Jerusalem, and the world press critiques its every move. Christian believers seek to come to the city to walk where Jesus walked. I'm Brian Bush, and I live in Jerusalem's old city, reporting three times a week on The Harvest Show. Think of me as your eyes and ears. Join me as we look at things in the Middle East from a Christian perspective on The Harvest Show on this La Cie Broadcasting Channel. Nepal earthquake victims need our help immediately. Feed the Hungry is providing critical food supplies to families suffering from the devastating 7.8 earthquake that has struck Nepal. The tragedy has caused widespread destruction in one of the world's poorest nations. The suffering is unimaginable, and we must respond now. We need your help now to purchase critical food and emergency supplies like rice, lentils, and blankets for thousands living and sleeping out in the cold. Please give generously and help us reach survivors in Nepal with compassion of Christ. They desperately need your help right now. Your gift of $60 will provide a month of food and emergency supplies to a surviving family in Nepal. $120 will give 10 survivors the life-saving aid they need. $600 empowers our local church partners in Nepal to help 50 earthquake victims who are struggling to survive. Thank you for helping us reach them today. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. And may the Lord place his name upon you. May the Lord bless you indeed and enlarge your border. May his hand of might be with you. May the Lord keep you from danger, prosper you, and give you hope. May the peace of God guard your heart and your mind in Christ. By his stripes you are healed. Like you don't like you 
yourself too much When I hear you talk it sounds like you just feel like giving up I know it's hard to see through what this world will tell you Cause misconceptions or false reflections will never be the truth Just know you're not the only one who's ever cried for help If you need prayer, you can start by giving us a call. The number is 1-800-365-3732. You can also reach the International Prayer Line by sending us an email to prayer at lacy.com. You can log on to worldharvest.com and submit your prayer request online, or you can send it through the mail at 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. Uh, whatever way you decide to contact us for prayer, don't wait. We are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, waiting to pray with you and, and to intercede on your behalf. And earlier in the show, I told you we would, uh, Brian Bush would join us with an update from the Holy Land. We had uh, difficulties connecting with him, but I promise you, Brian will be back on the show this week. And Pastor Charles, you have a number of prayer requests or praise reports. Uh, praise reports today, Valerie. This is very interesting. We, we're getting praise reports in from our partners. We have partners who are monthly partners in faith. That's right, monthly. And you know, sometimes uh, different ones feel like if they just send in a donation, they uh -huh. become a partner. But we're talking about those ones who have actually come alongside of us each and every month and they are really giving and God is really blessing them. For instance, we have Virgil. Virgil says, as I've been watching Watching your show for a long time now and I learned to tithe from my business from you guys. It says each time I tithe my business grows. And he <laughs> says also when I increase my tithes in church my uh -huh. business grows. And he says, thanks, let's see. And then we have Anita says that, Anita says that my praise, uh, we praise God for his goodness. I can see his hand move in my life and in our family's growth. And as we send in our prayer requests, Thank you, prayer line, and let's see. And then Jesse says, I have been asking God to help me and my, uh, help me and with my faith. Please never stop playing Dr. Summerall's teachings. She says, they have been so needed and effective in my walk with God. And thank you again, prayer line. And Sybil says that, thank you, uh, prayer line, uh, through my family, uh, through my family uh, has learned to pray for each other, it says that my sister prayed for me, laid hands on me, and I have been healed by God. You know, Pastor Charles, sometimes we t just kind of assume that people know some of the teachings about tithing and praying for one another, there but uh, thank God for the ministries of mm -hmm. Lacey Broadcasting. That's why Pastor Charles was talking to you about being a monthly partner right. in faith right. so that you can help us continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people around mm -hmm. the world so they can get that teaching about tithing or get the teaching yeah. about prayer and the importance of prayer, but more importantly or equally important to grow in your faith. And if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Pastor Charles, 
it's very simple to come to faith in him. Isn't absolutely, it? absolutely. And and we, we try not to get into counseling right. on prayer line. We try mm -hmm. to make sure that we get the person prayed for. But a lot of times we realize that some of the ones who call have not really been involved in a local assembly. That's right. Not only are they not involved in a local assembly, they do not know Jesus Christ. That's why That's I want right. to encourage you today. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Right. So if you do not know the Lord, just admit to him that you are a sinner. Mm -hmm. We are uh, born sinners, innate. It's in our nature to That's be right. sinners. And But there, the good news is that we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for you. That's so if right. you accept him as your personal Savior, you he will come in and live in your heart and guide you and direct you in all matters of life. Now, Pastor That's Charles, right. we have That's about right. 30 seconds. Can you pray for us? Sure. Father in heaven, we thank, thank you today, you. Lord God, for those ones who are indeed, Lord God, calling you for prayer, thank but also, you, Lord, who are calling back with their praise reports. Father, we thank you right now because your salvation plan is fully in motion, Lord God, and those ones who are reaching out to you, Lord God, are being touched. We're asking you, Lord God, to continue, Lord God, to move on their behalf and continue to render favor on their behalf as well, and we'll continue to praise you and lift up your holy name. In the name of your son, we pray these prayers. Amen. 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 And you know, Call now if you need prayer. Don't wait. 1-800-365-3732. Don't forget about Brian Bush. You can catch out his blog online and he will be with us tomorrow. We are so glad you decided to join us here on Harvest. See you later. I'm Pete Summerall with Lassie Tours. Behind me, incredible city of Jerusalem and Mount Zion where Christ had the Last Supper with the disciples. Lassie Tours comes to Israel three times a year and we want you to come along. We've got some great information for you on LassieTours.com about how you can come to the land of the Bible and experience the Bible for yourself. We come in February, June and November. They're great tours and we've got more information for you at LassieTours.com. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit Lassie.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.